The Boeing 727 by FlyJ Sim for X Plane 11. Today we're going to take you through the power up and pre flight procedures for this beautiful aircraft. Welcome to San Francisco. You can see I've got a Pan Am livery. This is actually an extra download. We're going to use these manuals that came with the FlyJ Sim. They've actually sent us three a systems, a regular, and a procedures. And we're using mostly amplified and expanded procedures for this video. First, you're going to need to see this fairly standard Boeing cockpit, main panel, overhead pedestal, very normal. Where life is going to be different is back here at the flight engineer station. Please note that APU panel. All of the electric, air pressure, fuel, and hydraulic functions are going to be handled back here, which is a little different if you're just used to the 737. So let's start our power up and pre-start. We're going to begin with the battery. It's on the upper part of the flight engineer station. Uncover the guard, click it. You'll see the DC power comes on. That doesn't give us everything at this point. Sliding on down by that big red light, that's your essential power the lector switch. Right now it needs to turn to standby and you'll see the warning light goes back out. On the back wall is our APU panel. We're going to be starting this up to give us uh, power. We could use a ground power unit, but I don't feel like it today. So clicking it to on and then click again to the start position. I really like the way things flicker there as though the electric is just kind of barely coming in. You'll hear the uh, whistle of the engine, the uh, APU firing up back there, as well as uh, this exhaust temperature gauge is going to start coming alive. It's going to take a moment before this thing is actually ready to provide power, which is uh, pretty realistic. It's got a great sound. All right, so here we are outside. You'll notice the APU exhaust is not where you're used to it being. Uh, most Boeings have the APU in the tail, but because of the S-duct for the number 2 engine on the Boeing 727, you can't put an APU there. I believe it's actually uh, in the belly around the gear bay area somewhere. Notice that bus tie isn't doing anything quite yet. Even though the APU exhaust is in the green band, it's not fully spooled up and ready to go. So we're going to watch that for a moment. I'm going to click the switch a few more times. This voiceover is being done post-production, so uh, that's why I'm going to narrate things as though I kind of know what's going on uh, in the future already. There we go, power's up, and you notice now that it's on bus, we have alternating current, we get panel lights. Now my APU is reading about 5 on that gauge, and uh, it dropped to back down to the bottom of the green band right after that. All right, so now the APU is on, we have power and the potential for uh, high pressure air. Going up front, you can do this from anywhere, but on the left side, we've got a number of useful menus. Weight and balance for loading and unloading. Beautiful menu. Takeoff card, we'll do that later. An options menu for the FMC, if you want to fly it like it's a modern jet. Uh, ground power, an air cart. Uh, also, if you like Imperial or metric, uh, we've got a maintenance if you want it to be realistic and have issues with maintenance and a checklist that you can go and actually modify yourself. All right, back to the flight engineer station. We're going to look at our pressurization for a moment uh, just to make sure this is set up. From your sim brief, you can get your cruising altitude, so we'll put that in here. I just arbitrarily selected an altitude. I'm not doing an actual flight today. This mode selector, we're going to leave in auto. And then this switch, I'm going to make a big deal about this. Don't forget where this flight ground switch is. It's not the most obvious thing in the world to find, but it is very important. We're on the ground right now, we're going to leave it in ground. Before takeoff, we're going to flick that to flight to begin pressurizing the aircraft. 
Okay, the high pressure air bleeds and the air conditioning packs, those are all up here. They're diagrammed, they're above that pressure setting menu, pretty much the top right corner. We're gonna turn both the left and right AC packs on since we have air from the APU. That is an option at this point. The Gasper fan, I believe that is actually the fan that runs the little blowers that you're used to seeing back in the passenger cabin. So we'll turn those on now. If you're watching the gauges, they are actually moving, reflecting the pressure change as well as the uh, air temperature change. We're going to want all of our engine bleeds open. There are four bleed valves, even though there's only three engines, and that's because number two can bleed off to the left or to the right. Going to the overhead, the passenger side, so you can turn those on, they're smoking, and seatbelts. There's one more above that uh, uh, seatbelt button. That's just your kind of ding-dong cabin shine. Emergency exit lights, I'm going to arm that now. And we'll turn on the navigation lights so anybody outside knows we're uh, active in the cockpit. Probably should have turned that on sooner, honestly. We've already got the APU running. Uh, red and green came on, so that's good. Okay, now just a little more pre-flight. We're going to check the flap lever. It's set, flaps up. And the flap indicators, both are symmetrical. They're matching for both the outboard and the inboard section of the flaps. Next, the uh, parking brake is set, just like 737. It's that little pull tab, and the red light comes on. Interior and panel lights, always good to do these in advance. If you uh, enter darkness and you don't have these on already, then you don't want to be scrambling trying to find your panel backlights. Uh, they're all labeled, so I'm not going to belabor what does what up here. You can read them and play with them to your preferences. Do note there's a little switch for the dome light. Uh, sometimes when you just can't find something, that's a good one to just grab. All right, the flight engineer's lower panel down here. We're going to start with some fuel checks. We have three fuel tank gauges. You'll notice they're scaled differently. The center tank holds a lot more than the wing tanks. So uh, take note of that. You can't just look at the needles and say, oh, they're all at the same place. No, they can have the same quantity, but the center one would appear at a glance lower because it is scaled differently for its uh, 32,000 pound capacity. We will use cross feeds anytime there's more fuel in that center than in the wing tanks because we want to burn out the center first to reduce uh, stress in the gear when we get to landing. Okay, hydraulic system A, we want to make sure that's on. I believe it defaults to the switches being up at startup, so we'll just check in. Hydraulic system B, we will turn on. That probably was going to be off. Our weight and balance menu, we can adjust it as per our sim brief. F means full, E means empty, and R means random. Same for the passengers, cargo, or the fuel. There is a seating diagram that pops up, as well as a cargo diagram. You can use those fuel empty and randoms, or you can actually click on each individual cell there of the seating or the cargo to incrementally load and unload those areas. So you can kind of fine tune it in that way, even though there's not a numerical. Well, notice the fuel gauge over there just spun up as we're messing with the fuel. It's kind of neat to see that in real time. Okay, there's our gross weight. Kind of want to make sure that matches your sim brief. There's the estimated range based on the fuel and weight and the optimal altitude for the um, weight of the aircraft at this point. All right, left and right tank are going to be holding less than tank number two, so that means we will have the uh, cross feeds on for this flight. all of our booster pump switches. At this point the procedure actually calls for just one of each, which seems a little bit strange, but that's what it says. So we're going to put one boost pump on for each tank at this point. Later we're going to turn them all on, so don't worry, we won't forget. We've got those big orange lights to remind us. Basically in flight we will not want any orange lights on. All right, so that center tank has substantially more fuel than the wings can even hold. So we're going to turn on the cross feed 
flick it, get that blue light, and once it's running, the blue light goes out. We will leave those on and open. All right, our performance data card. This thing's wonderful. It's got a takeoff and a landing setting. I'm not really going to use the landing setting today. You notice the uh, red there on our weight card. That means we're over max landing. Not a big deal unless we have to come back to the airport uh, for some sort of emergency. The takeoff card itself has pretty much all the calculations you'd want. These should be calculated by hand in the real world, but fortunately the fly sim does it for us. You can click the flap setting on that card and it will recalculate for those settings. You'll see the weights are adjusting as we are uh, burning off fuel with the APU that's going to keep moving and the everything will be recalculated based upon those new weights. Okay, so using the Avatab plugin, you can see we're at SFO, and we're going to pull our ATIS frequency. Interestingly enough, about 24 hours ago, an update was released with an Avatab uh, tablet, as well as some rain effects for this aircraft. Uh, I didn't feel like reshooting the whole video, and I don't think it substantially changes really the operation of anything San but Francisco for our friends Lion flying in VR it's a big deal. Oscar. Zero hundred Zulu weather. Wind 310 at 11. Visibility more than 10. Sky clear. Temperature 32. Dew point minus 6. Altimeter 2987. Arriving runways 28 left. 28 right. Okay, those are the ones Departing we wanted. Runways Altimeter in the left. runway. 28 right. 01 right. 01 left. Advise on initial contact, you have Oscar. It's really a beautiful panel. YJ Sam has done an amazing job with this. I'm not really uh, qualified to give an opinion San on the Francisco fidelity I of the system LA operation, but Oscar. it appears to be fantastic, and from what I've seen on forums zero, online, uh, I have seen no real 727 pilots complaining about it. If you look at our uh, VHF frequency range here, we only can go from 118 up to 136. So if you're looking at a chart and you see something outside that range, don't try and tune it in. Grab one that is in that range. Pretty standard Boeing setup there in the radios. Notice no FMC at the moment, and that weather radar, I think once I install the uh, update, should be operational. Okay, back to the overhead panel. Way up in the top right, this is our window heat section. Four window heaters, turn them on, and those green lights will remain on for the duration of the flight. Alright, so on the uh, horizontal situational indicator, we're going to want to set our runway heading. I think I'm actually just spinning this here in the video, because uh, later I'll adjust it correctly. Since I do not have the FMC, we would also want to tune up our first nav aid, whether that's uh, an outbound or an inbound on the VOR. And we might have clearance delivery on the uh, VHF as well as maybe departure, ground, other frequencies ready to go. Here's our transponder. Dial in your code. The two large knobs are going to handle uh, the, the first two digits on the left and the second two digits on the right. And there's your mode switch right there. In the center pedestal, we want to adjust that trim you're in the green band. It actually does tell you on the performance card where your trim setting should be, so you want to run it out to there. Alright, the bugs. This is fantastic. The bugs do slide, so you can set them yourself, uh, which I don't really enjoy doing. You can also set the engine bugs. These engines are run mostly off the exhaust pressure ratio and 
you can set the bugs because there's no auto throttle. That is what makes this 727 so demanding to fly. You're going to spend uh, the whole time watching it. If you click the uh, set bugs, it'll set those for you as well as these V-speeds. Good to check all those flap retracts and get those in your head so you have an idea when to do them. But you've got these three things bugged. That data card is just really a wonderful feature. All right, that's most of the pre-flight. So now we're getting pretty close to uh, ready for an engine start. I'll we'll make sure the galley power is off at this point. I never actually turned it on. No one in first class got coffee while they were waiting. The packs need to be off because we want the uh, high pressure air and you'll see that pressure was coming up before it switched over. Here we are in the overhead. All right, just beside the fasten seatbelt is a ground call. Hey captain, let me know where you want this thing. It's a preset start point. I'm just gonna hit enter. Great news, Captain. Your toe's coming. Notice I have the air stairs down. I did that before you saw it on the video. Shift and F1 will drop that stairs. Here comes the tug right now. Uh, the Flight G Sim does not have a cabin. I will admit that's the only thing, the only thing that disappoints me about this. I know it's not necessary. We're practicing flying, enjoying flying, but uh, there's a sense of depth, I guess. It gives the aircraft when you can walk back there and feel like it's real. So let's turn on the beacon. We're about to push back, and we want to have lights on so people know the engines will be starting. Welcome aboard, Captain. Toast connected, bypass pens inserted. Go ahead and kill the parking brake when you're ready to go. All right, let's release the brake. Hear the bell. Here comes the pushback. That is the auto Light gate plug-in beginning to retract. If I had stayed up there in the captain's seat, we would hear the bell louder because we're closer to it. Uh, the auto gate plug-in works with a number of custom sceneries. This uh, KSFO works beautifully. Okay, once again, let's check. Those engine bleeds are on, the packs are off, we have pressure over 20 on the pressure gauge. So that means we should have enough pressure to start spooling engines. I'm going to jump up to the overhead panel. We've got three ignition guards. We're going to start. Just about done here. Go ahead and set your parking brake. You don't need to hold the switch, you're just going to click it down once. And we're disconnecting the tow. Give me just a uh, moment. I know that parking brake doesn't line up with the video you're watching of the pushback in the corner. Alright, so N1 is just beginning to creep. The N2 was in the 17 to 20 percent range. So we can start the fuel cutoff uh, up to idle. Oil light is out, so we're going to consider this engine started at this point. So yeah, the pushback video I inserted, it's, it's slightly not timed with the actual engine start that we're doing. That's why he's uh, telling us he's done when you still see us pushing. And we're disconnected. Signal and pin on the right. Take it easy and have a safe All right, flight. right, we're ready for engine two. Same deal. We're going to click once to ground. Wait for engine two. It's 17 to 20. N1 should be starting to creep up. We'll cut in the fuel. Keep an eye on the gauges in case there's a problem. We need to shut back down. And wait for the oil light to go out.
All right, so we're going to do this just one more time here in a second for engine one. And everything is exactly the same. You may have seen in some of our other videos, uh, 707s, the Michael Wilson, which unfortunately is not available for sale anymore. But um, it's another classic Boeing jet, and I love flying it. But the quality level, if you want to go and compare between these, oh, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. Quite honestly, if, uh, if Fly J Sim released a 707, I would, I would be buying it immediately. but you get a, a similar feel. It's kind of neat to compare the 707 to the 737s and see how the 727 is really perfectly right in between in its cockpit layout. One's coming up there. There is a Pan Am livery included with the FlyJ Sim. I've downloaded this one because I like the uh, cheat line down the windows. And the one included is the billboard style with the giant Pan Am written on the side. Okay, all the oil lights are out. We have a powered ship. All three engines are running. Let's close the ignition guards. We're back at the flight engineer station. The essential power needs to be toggled over and we want to make sure that the uh, red light stays out. First, I'm going to close breakers so the uh, bus tie is basically done. So now we have electric from the engines. They all look good, and we're going to leave it on Gen 3. Galley power can come on. You'll notice the external power switch is right under that if we were using the GPU, which we are not. Time to get the rest of those fuel pumps in. Just look for the orange lights. Any of the switches you left down. Lights out, pumps are on. Check our hydraulics. System A is good, system B is still good. Okay, flap setting. Check your card, make sure you set it the same as you have calculated and set the bugs for. Okay, gauges show the flaps in transit. And we do the sim. Down on out, we'll check it. Alright, I'm gonna check our flight controls now. I don't like doing this while taxiing because my rudder is linked to the tiller. So um, unless I want to be swerving down the <laughs> taxiway. It's a pain to check the freedom of motion of the rudder. If we're going to use any taxi or runway turnoff lights, now's a good time to put them on. And the pitot heat. Again, we don't want any orange lights left on. So those will go out. Okay, flight engineer's upper panel. We're going to shut down the bleeds on engine two. And turn the AC packs back on. see the pressure dropping there as the AC uses it. Alright, the uh, mode here and the pressurization should be left in auto. I was just playing with it there. And we're going to switch to flight. Very important, switch it to flight. You can see the pressurization beginning and the cabin uh, climb and descend meter starts moving. So you can imagine the problems you're going to have if you never switch it to flight. Since the ship is powered and the generators are on bus, standby is over, we can now shut down the APU. Uh, noted in the manual, this must be off in flight. And I have a suspicion that could be because uh, where it's located it might not actually be it's safe to run it in the air. I could be wrong, I'm just guessing that. All right, so we're gonna begin our taxi out to 28 left. Very, very typical takeoff for San Francisco. I'm going to cut out the taxi. I just want you to hear the uh, engine sounds. Very good sound. Very good sounds. All right, we're at the hold short for 28 left. It's 
San Francisco is very busy. The live traffic plugin is running. Looks like we've got a parallel approach going on at the moment for 28 left and 28 right. While we're waiting for those ships to get in here, let's double check. Make sure our trim is with the card. The flaps are set. Speed brake is stowed. I'm going to click the set bugs again just in case anything is uh, changed after, after our taxi. I know it looks like that aircraft just went through all the lights. Trust me, it didn't actually crash. There's just some discontinuity between the data that comes in and how it lines up on the ground. So, turning off on the uh, landing lights and the transponder. All right, that aircraft's over for 2-8 right, so we should be good to taxi out and line up right now. I'm going to put the link for the scenery pack into the video description. I highly recommend it. It's been in other videos. I'll be honest, I fly into and out of uh, SFO very frequently just because this free custom scenery is so good. All the landmarks are On here. Runway, two, eight, left. The airport's amazing. Alright, I mentioned that uh, bug should be set to runway heading. I hadn't actually looked it up when uh, I did it earlier. I'm going to set that first departure altitude. The little toggle switch there lets you switch the knob to thousands or hundreds. Autopilot, if you were going to prep anything, just, just note this is where the autopilot is. That's the command mode, that lever. Uh, unfortunately, that just messed with my trim, so let's set it back. Uh, above the airspeed indicator, there's an autopilot disconnect that's going on right now. I'll turn that warning off in a moment. We got a departure out there. Okay, so just like every other aircraft, stabilize your engines and then bring it up to take off power. You're not just going to firewall the throttles. You're going to look at that takeoff bugged EPR so that you don't blow your engines out. 80 knots. And this is why it's a three-man cockpit. It's very busy. Uh, you're going to be trying to fly here and keep an eyeball on that EPR okay. to make sure that it doesn't depart from it. Alright, the gear is coming up. Later I'll need to go and switch that gear handle to off. We're not flying an actual departure right now, I'm just taking off. I notice usually that once we get airborne, uh, I tend to need to kick in a little bit more throttle to keep the EPR on those bugs, so just something to be aware of can reference our flap retract speeds by leaving up that performance data card. You can see on the right hand side of the screen there, the flap indicators to see where we're at. So just a lot to keep an eye on on departure, especially if you're going to do a VOR departure, you'd be watching your engine EPR, or EPR as people tend to say as well as watching your climb, trimming out the aircraft, and maintaining all of those retract speeds. All right, there's our last flap retract, 210. All right, let's enjoy the scenery. Coming out of San Francisco, we've got the Golden Gate Bridge. Alcatraz was off to the right all included in this airport scenery pack that'll be in the video description. So we've given you the basics here for getting the ship powered up and departing. We'll do some more videos in the future about how you actually navigate with the VOR. Um, it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. You're going to feel like you're flying the whole time rather than just uh, programming a computer and watching it fly.
Uh, some basic autopilot there. Kick in heading mode, arm the altitude, and that will maintain whatever VS we set up to the altitude that you see set on the screen. Again, beautifully rendered aircraft. Not much to complain about. There's also numerous liveries available, so you can find your favorite model of 727. There's also a 100 series included in the pack if you want to do that, as well as freighters. The uh, operations we just showed you don't really vary for those, so you can use this video for any of them. That's going to do it for today. Be sure to subscribe for future content. Remember, plan the flight and fly the plane.